What's going on everybody, it's Monkey Farm. We're here on a flat world and we are gonna do an overview, basics, tips and tricks, kind of getting started video for the Create mod. Uh, as you know, I've been live streaming using this mod over on my uh, Twitch channel and uh, we've been kind of learning everything in real time over there. Uh, so sometimes it takes, you know, a couple hours or whatever. But um, I'm gonna give you not like a fully in-depth detailed thing about every single thing in the mod. Uh, what I'm hoping to do is kind of give you some info on uh, how to move through the mod and get what you need to actually play using it, right? Like, uh, what do you need to do first? What are some of the uh, useful machines you can build, stuff like that. Uh, hopefully I'm showing a little piece of the of the trailer on the screen so you can see kind of what it does. It's a really cool mod. It's uh, it's kind of like steampunky uh, kind of thing, but it's uh, it's uh, it's about automation kind of. You, uh, you make a bunch of contraptions to automate things, you know, like uh, building farms and stuff that can kind of automate themselves or, you know, of course, like in the trailer, there's a fully automated cake machine. Uh, so at some point, I'm sure uh, we'll have to get to that. Um, but a lot of cool things. And uh, I've been uh, learning about all these machines and, and building some of them and uh, doing all that stuff over on my stream. And I did a little poll over on my YouTube channel and you guys said you wanted me to do a kind of getting started tips and tricks kind of video. Uh, so I figured that's what I would do. I, I did do one video on the fully automatic mining machine. Uh, that was pretty cool, but um, I should give you kind of an overview of little things I've learned and uh, stuff that will help you out when you're getting started using the mod. And uh, yeah, so let's go. So just as a suggestion, on top of this mod, I also have just enough items, which basically tells you, uh, gives you the recipes of how you craft these things and different information about them, right? Um, so we've got a grinder and we need andesite alloy and andesite and iron nuggets and that kind of thing. Um, so this is a very useful mod. Obviously, you won't really know the recipe unless you have this mod. Uh, the other one that I recommend getting is, as you can see on the top of the screen, it tells me what item I'm looking at. Now, some of these blocks kind of look similar and you might want to know like, hey, which which block is this? Is this a different block? Um, so obviously, whatever you're looking at, uh, this is called W-A-I-L-A, -A, which is what am I looking at? Uh, that's the mod. And also I have a mini map on as well. Um, and I have shaders, but that's up to you how you like the game to look. Um, so what you need to get started really is power. So I'm going to show you some of the first, you know, the entry level power generation uh, type of things you can do in the game. And it's not really called power in the game. It's basically like rotation. Uh, you know, it's like if you're turning a bunch of gears and cogs, you know, you need spinning power and you need it's called stress units, actually. But, you know, we'll just call it power to be generic. So what I have here is, as you can see at the top of the screen, three water wheels uh, connected together. And the reason I have three is because you need power, or I mean, you need water running over these wheels to make them spin. And they won't create any power unless they're spinning, right? Um, so the reason I have three is there's no water over this wheel. And as you can see from the goggles I'm wearing, which I recommend crafting, uh, it'll tell you how much power an item is creating or using. And uh, so this one has none because there's no water over it. This one has the water kind of spilling over from this block over here. So it's creating 40 stress units and this is creating 80. And the reason obviously the water is covering more of the surface area of the wheel and making it spin more. Now, of course you can make like a C shape of water going this direction, falling down and back here, which helps it generate 120 you don't want to use up all the power or the machine will stop uh, working if you're using too much. It'll basically grind to a halt. Now, the next thing, um, now, I guess I can show you real quick the recipe. Uh, water wheel is just a cog and a bunch of uh, wood slabs. The cog is andesite alloy. Um, and for that, you need andesite and iron nuggets. So nothing nothing special there. You don't need any special machines or anything to build it. This is kind of like the entry level thing. Um, once you get into some of the machines, um, you've got a windmill here. And the, basically, uh, this allows you to 
uh, generate a lot more power. As you can see, 2048 stress units. Uh, this is a mechanical bearing and it needs to be powered by redstone. Basically, you know, you can have a, uh, a lever doing that. Um, and then you need to attach radial chassis to it or one radial chassis and uh, slime balls to make it sticky, of course. Um, and that is going to need to be connected to that. Now, the, the way you make this spin faster and generate more stress units or power or torque or whatever, whatever you actually want to call it, um, I'm just going to add a bunch of extra wool to this thing. And as you can see, uh, we're going to go back and check the stress units later. It was 2048 a second ago. Now, I think you can have about 100 wool blocks on this thing to power it. So it's at zero, it's off. Um, but now we're doing, we're generating 4608. Um, so the more wool you have attached to this thing, uh, the more torque or stress units or power you're going to generate from it. Now, uh, as you can see, uh, these little gears spin. Now this is a gearbox and uh, it's pretty easy to make as well, but I'll just show it to you real quick here. Um, you need a bunch of more cog wheels, which you're going to need an andesite casing. So by the way, andesite is a, an important commodity in the, in the mod. So I guarantee, uh, or I recommend, uh, not throwing it away like I used to do. Um, definitely collect as much of that as you can, because you're going to be using it quite a bit. Um, but gearboxes basically help you connect things. These are shafts right here that you just place and connect them to gearboxes. This will help you kind of turn the corners. So the gearbox is going, from a horizontal shaft, you know, to a vertical shaft going down here. Um, so it helps you kind of move things around. And we also have belts. Uh, this is a belt pulley, which this is not a total necessary trick, um, but an analog belt pulley uh, connected to an encased belt will actually help it spin faster. If you look at when I turn on the lever, see how it speeds up. So just a little tip. All right, the next way to generate some power, this isn't a lot of power, but it's a lot more than the water wheels over there. This is a fan. And as you can see, um, it needs to be powered or you know, have a lever or redstone either way. And it's making this uh, shaft spin right here. Um, and it's basically powered, you can power it with lava as well, I think, um, but I have a fire and another nether rack. Uh, but as you can see, this is what it looks like underneath. So it's basically a spinning fan. So it's kind of self-powered. You don't need uh, much else other than, you know, basically the heat from some kind of fire. I think you can use campfires underneath it as well. Um, and then here is the gear that you would connect things to, like uh, like a shaft or, you know, something other than than that. All right. Next, we have the furnace engine. Now this will generate quite a bit more uh, energy or torque or whatever we want to call it, uh, but it does require that the furnace is in use. So you have to be burning something to power this furnace engine. Now the reason I expl- Alrighty then. Um, the reason I'm showing you this after is because the furnace engine actually needs brass. Uh, so I'm going to show you that in a second, um, you know, show you how you kind of get to that. Um, but you do need to burn something in here to generate the, uh, the power. But as you can see, we're generating 16,384 stress units. So that's a lot more than the windmill, a lot more than the water wheels, and obviously a lot more than the little fan right there. Another way that I haven't actually used in the real game or survive in my survival world is um, a hand crank. Now, the reason I showed you this last is because this actually takes brass to craft as well. So uh, it's not kind of early game. It's kind of like right getting into the mid game where you're, you're able to generate uh, or able to craft brass. Um, but you basically right click, hold down, right click, and it will spin and then you let go and it stops. Um, so that's kind of when you want to just do a single use of something, right? Where you just need to walk up to something and, and make something happen. Uh, you don't need it running 24 hours a day 
running your machines. It's just something that you want to use like, you know, immediately and then stop. Um, so I think I have a few ideas of things that that would be useful for. So uh, I'm sure I'll craft one of those eventually. All right, so we've got the power generating tools uh, kind of taken care of. Um, now, how do we get all the materials we need to craft all this stuff? Uh, now, here is something that's gonna come in very useful uh, for a lot of different things, actually, and it's uh, a little bit more useful than vanilla. Uh, I, was, I was trying to smelt a bunch of stone, and uh, I thought to myself, you know what? I think we can smelt uh, this cobblestone. And that's a whole stack, by the way. We just smelted a whole stack of cobblestone by putting a fan in front of lava and basically melting, melting that stone. And uh, there's a lot of things that we need to do to convert items into something else or, you know, they call this washing. Uh, if you put it in front of water, I guess you call this smelting or something. And this is, you know, cooking this. The fire one is basically just for food. Uh, like I could take this stack of, what is that? Beef or mutton or something. And it's going to cook a whole stack for me. And you can, you can kind of see that something's happening. It has like steam or smoke kind of floating up from it so you can tell that something's actually happening now if you put one item down it's going to cook a lot quicker than a whole stack so if you put a stack down it's going to take a lot longer um not a huge amount longer but you know i don't know 30 seconds maybe something like that but now we have a whole stack of cooked pork chops pretty cool um i can throw down actually why don't i just throw down one copper ore uh so that'll cook nice and quickly and that's going to give us uh, basically an ingot. You can do that with iron ore, um, you know, other items as well. Let's see. That is a copper ingot. Now, you can also wash items. Uh, for example, I had to craft a... There was something called a sequencer, a sequence gear shift that I wanted to craft. And I needed brass sheets. And I needed all I needed to do all this stuff, and basically, I had to take the crushed brass that you see here, and I'll show you how to get that in a second. Um, but then, to turn it into an ingot, you basically have to wash it, and it should turn into some brass nuggets. There they are. And another contraption you're going to want early on is uh, crushing wheels because that's going to help you get the crushed brass uh, to begin with. Uh, so we can throw in, let's see, we already have some zinc ore in there. So let's throw that. And uh, it dropped through the, the crushing wheels. And as you can see, we've got, I don't know if the screen is going to show it. Uh, but basically, we just picked up the crushed zinc. And uh, as I showed you a second ago, the crushed zinc or crushed brass or whatever, um, you put that into the washer, then you get the, uh, what do you call it? The ingots, right? So yeah, these things all kind of work together. Another couple things you're gonna need to craft the materials you need to basically uh, craft these other machines and little machineries and thingies. <laughs> I'm just going to call them thingies. Um, we need a mechanical press and a mechanical mixer. Uh, these are very useful, obviously. Uh, let's see. Can I throw that down and will it do anything for me? Let's see. No, that didn't give me anything. But if I take the brass ingot that I got over there or the copper ingot, let's just try that real quick. By the way, there are easier ways to do that. I'm just, uh... yep, and there we go. We've got a copper sheet. Now, as, as I mentioned, we needed a brass sheet for uh, the sequencer that I was making. Um, and then we can also use mixers for mixing together multiple materials. Like to get brass, you actually have to combine copper and zinc, right? Um, so the mixer can actually mix some cooking ingredients. Like if you wanted to make bread, 
Uh, you would take the dough that you get from wheat, I think, and or not bread. Uh, sorry, if you wanted to make cake, I don't know what the ingredients are, but you get the picture. You need to, if you need to mix together multiple ingredients to convert it into something else, um, you're going to use something like the mechanical mixer. All right, so those are kind of like the first two stages of things you're going to need. You're going to need the power, and then you're going to need the materials, right? Uh, those those machines I showed you first, obviously, are going to give you the power to run the machines and all of that. Uh, then all this stuff is going to help you get the materials in the right state, you know, that you need them, or, you know, convert things into different materials, uh, that kind of thing. Now, um, we're kind of out of the basics, but this is just kind of like a sneak peek um, into a bunch of different things. So what do we do once we have all the materials? What can we do with them? We can make a bunch of cool contraptions, right? Um, so we have an extractor. We've got, this is essentially a chest, but it's a crate. Um, we have belts that we can move stuff around with, right? So let me just throw that on there. We have detectors. So it's an observer. It just observed that block that was on the belt. So it basically powers redstone. Uh, so if you need it to activate something when an item comes through, uh, it will do that. And then you have a filter, I mean, sorry, a funnel that will take items off of the belt or it will pick them off the ground or wherever you want. It doesn't have to be on a belt and going into another crate. Now, there is something extra special about all these as well. Let me put, if you right click an item into these things, um, what's going to happen, or actually let me right click off of this. Uh, so there's nothing on that. Um, let's say I throw this in there. Well, nothing happened, but that's because I, I'm only telling it to extract the zinc ore out of the crate. But if I take that off, it will dump out anything that, that I throw in there. So you can tell it what item you want it to activate on. So let's throw in a bunch of that stuff. Now, did it just dump the whole lot? It did. So you can also tell it how many. I'm, I'm pointing at it and scroll wheeling, and I can tell it how many to drop. So now let's say instead of dropping the whole stack, I want it to just drop. Let's see, where did all that stuff go? Oh, it's way over here. All right. We're jumping ahead a little bit. Uh, but let's say I wanted it to only drop one at a time. See, now it's dropping one at a time. See? And the redstone is... The redstone, this is activating when any block, but let's say I say I only want it to activate when there's a gearbox in front of it. Guess what? It stops activating the redstone. So you can have it activate on only specific items as well. So that's kind of cool. And these are all popping off because I told it to only pay attention to zinc ore. But let's say I tell it to pay attention to this brass stuff now. Now, those are getting sucked into the funnel. Pretty cool. Now this is a transposer that basically I can tell it to only take the brass out as well, or I can tell it to take some other item out. All right. Um, yeah, there was a small problem there. For some reason it was set to 18 because I guess that was probably what the initial stack was. Um, but now I've told it to take one out. Now what it was doing, it was waiting until there were 18 in here to say I put this up to to 60 or something, it's going to stop pulling these out until this thing has 60 or 58 of that item in the crate. But if I lower it down to, say, one, let's see, one, it'll start taking them out one by one. And then here's just another crate, and here's an extractor putting it onto these belts. Now, let's say I had, uh, let's just throw an ingot in there real quick of something. Let's just take an iron ingot. Okay, watch this iron ingot. So any any items that are able to be pressed with the mechanical press, you can put that over the belt and it's going to uh, press it as it comes by. And as you can see, the whole assembly line kind of stopped and let the mechanical press do its work. It didn't like bunch up all the items and pile them up or anything. It stopped everything. It was all like a factory. Uh, so very organized, really cool kind of feature uh, to the belts and everything. So you don't, you know, get a bunch of items all clumping up and getting smashed all at the same time. Um, I don't know, just something interesting. What else can we do? So obviously this is going to come in handy. Uh, pistons, 
We have gear shift, which is kind of like a gear gearbox, but it's telling it what direction to go. Uh, you know, as you know, we're spinning these gears, right? Um, and this is a clutch, which is basically an on off. These are kind of like uh, the circuits that we used to build in Minecraft manually, um, but they're all in one box. So here's a clutch to basically turn it on or off, right? As you can see, so we'll turn it on. And as you can see, the gear shift is telling the piston which direction to go. Um, right now it's pushing it back, but if I push it this way, it's gonna go all the way out here. Now, I also had it connect uh, to all these blocks. So what happens when we bring it back, all this stuff is going to come out. Um, I'm not quite sure what happened there, <laughs> why these blocks were here. Um, but anyway, let's have this thing go back out again. And we've got a couple items on here that I thought you guys might want to see. We had a drill and it was turning as it was moving forward and we have a harvester. So we've got things that can do farming for us and things that can do mining for us or block breaking or whatever. Uh, there's also saws which will chop down trees and things like that. We've got a uh, deployer, which will kind of do almost anything that a player can do. Um, so you can have it place items like saplings or put a sword in its hand and it will kill mobs for you, that kind of thing. Um, obviously, this is a little bit more advanced than just getting started beginner stuff. Um, I'm still kind of learning how to use this. I think there's a lot more that I still need to learn because um, I think there's a lot we can do with it. Um, but in general, that is um, kind of the bulk of it. We also have wireless redstone, which I think is really cool. Um, we can, you know, set that up to uh, to open and close our gates. Um, you can have a button on it. You can have it on completely or off completely. Um, so anyway, cool things like that. Uh, I think that's a pretty good, like, getting started, you know? Um, this is going to be a lot of what you need uh, to get started. Um, I'm sure I will do follow-up videos of kind of more advanced stuff as I figure them out, or I might do individual uh, contraptions or machines that I build, like I did the automatic mining machine uh, that pushes a mine cart through the mine and breaks all your blocks and collects all the blocks. Um, so that was a cool video. If you didn't see that, obviously check that out. Um, but yeah, it's a really fun mod. I've been having a lot of fun streaming it as well, as I mentioned. Um, so be sure to, uh, check that out. Um, but yeah, I hope that was helpful for you guys. Um, feel free to post any questions in the comments and, you know, I'm sure a lot of other viewers can help out and I will help out answering questions and stuff as well. Uh, but I'm having fun and I hope you guys have fun with the mod too and enjoy it. And that's it for today. See ya.